is what in the world do you do if you have two logical tests? Everything we've seen so far only had one. Here's the situation. Our company only extends credit when a credit rating is for the customer is above or equal to 2.5 or greater than or equal to 500,000 for last year sales. So there's two tests. Here's our customer, six, $650,000 last year and a rating of 2.3. So we can see that both tests are not met. So we would not extend credit. But we want to do this with uh, the if function. And the trick is when you have more than one logical test, you use the and if you want them both to come out true. You'll use the or, which we'll see how to do, if only one of them needs to come out to be true. Let's go ahead and see how this works. Equals if, and then we use the and function. Notice the and function screen tip says logical test, logical test. And you can put uh, up to 64 in 2007 um, separated by commas. So here's our first test. Are the sales for this customer greater than or equal to the hurdle? That's one test. The screen tips always remind you type a comma, and then there's the next one. Uh, is the customer's credit rating greater than or equal to this hurdle? Now, we're done. We have two tests. We could have more. We close parentheses. Now, let's see how this works. That's The AND will deliver just one true or one false to the logical test. But let's see how each one of these logical tests inside of the AND function works. I'm going to highlight this and hit the F9, which is evaluate. You see that comes out to be true. I'll quickly control Z to undo that. And then I'll highlight this and F9 key to evaluate. Oh, it comes out false. So since both of them are not true, then this AND will deliver a false to the IF. I'm going to control Z. It's always dangerous to do that F9 trick. But watch this. We'll just highlight this whole thing and hit F9. Sure enough, it comes out false because they weren't both true. Control Z. Let's continue on. There's the logical test. I put a comma. And what is the value if true? The value if true is going to be in quotes, extend credit in edit mode, comma, otherwise no credit. No credit. And then I'm going to hit ent uh, Control Enter. Now let's test it. Right now it says no because they both came out, they didn't both come out true. Let's just put a three here and see what happens. Sure enough, we extend credit. I'm going to Control Z. Now I'm going to um, put this into edit mode by hitting F2. I'm going to copy the whole formula because the or is exactly the same except we change the and to an or. Control C, Escape, click here, F2. Control V. By the way, that was a cool way to copy your formula without having the uh, relative cell references change. Now, all we need to do is change this to O, O, R, or, and now the fact that this is true and this is false, or we'll see at least one true. This is true, so the whole or will do, because one of them is true, the or will say true to the if function. Extend, Extend credit. credit. Now let's test that. Let's make this $1. $1. Now they're both not credit, because the or couldn't find even one true. Control Z. Let's change this to uh, 4. And now they're both. Both of those tests have been met. Control Z. <clears throat> now let's see our next if trick. We want to talk about. Uh, multiple ifs. They're uh, called nesting ifs. And our situation is we have sales and a bonus. But if we scroll over here, you can see our bonus uh, schedule is set up this way. If you have sales, ours are 25,000, but 10,000 uh, greater than or equal to 10,000, we get a 4% commission. Uh, greater than or equal to 5,000 but less than 10,000, we get a 2%. And if it's below 5,000, we get 0%. Now here's the trick. And I have these golden rules over here, even though they're in pink. Uh, the golden rule is if you have mutually exclusive categories like this, which we do, that means there's no holes. All the possible values fit into this situation. Uh, and we have uh, one, two, three different things uh, that we're putting into a cell. As long as you start at the top and then go through and do the next one and then the next one, or start at the bottom and then go to the next one and then to the next one, your if will work 
uh, perfectly. And you don't have to mess around with AND functions and things like that. So we're going to do our IF starting at the top and then we'll go down to the bottom. Now those two rules are summed up here. Multiple IF rule number one. Be sure that you start at the top and go to the bottom or bottom and go to the top. And I'll show you how to do that. And number two, if there's three possibilities which we have here, there are two IFs. If there's four possibilities, there's three IFs, etc. All right, let's see how to do this equals if, and our test is are our sales greater than or equal to 10,000. Now I'm choosing to start at the top. If that's the case, then we're going to take our sales times the corresponding 4%. Uh, now we need to go to the next one, comma, and the value if false. Well, we have two more possibilities, so we need another if. If our sales are greater than or equal to this 5,000. The reason why this works is because if this first part, first part comes out to be false, we've eliminated the top part. So saying greater than, is this greater than or equal to that will work just fine. Comma, and the thing we want to put in the cell if this is true is our sales times are two percent. Notice how the for each if it goes boom boom and now this if goes boom boom. So these values are right next to each other. Comma, now there's only one possibility left and it's the uh, 25,000 times the zero percent. Now if it was really zero we could just type in zero but keeping that structure is pretty handy because if you did have a percent there it would work just fine. Now we have to close parentheses and notice it's green, so we have to keep putting parentheses until we see the black. Then control enter. That keeps the cell highlighted. One thousand dollars. Let's test it. Let's put in a zero. A zero. Let's put in a five thousand. Oh, exactly right. Let's put in a, a nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Correct, and then a ten thousand. So there we go. We have, um, and then our twenty-five thousand way above. Now, let's see an alternative to this, and as soon as you see um, multiple ifs like this where you have um, uh, mutually exclusive categories and your uh, first column of the table is sorted in ascending order and then you have the value you want to return to your formula in the second column, forget using this big if, you switch to VLOOKUP. So we're going to come down here and we're going to do uh, the same type of formula but much, much, much simpler. V lookup, and it wants a lookup value. It's going to be this right here. Now, the table array, we hit a comma, and we highlight this whole table right here. The way the V lookup works is it takes that, and it races through this first column, and when it r runs into a value that's bigger than it, it jumps back to the next row. In our case, there is no value. That's the last value, so it's going to take that 4%. When it's uh, between 5,000 and 10,000, it will return this row comma, now the column index. Here's the first column, that's what it looks up. Here's the second column, that's what it's going to return to the cell, so we put a 2. Now the final argument, when we type a comma, is approximate or exact. We want approximate because we have some range of values here. So you can leave that off and just close parentheses. I have to backspace and get rid of that comma. Now that VLOOKUP returns a 0.4, which is that value right there, but that's not really what we want, F2 times our 25,000. And it will return the same value. So that's when to switch over to the if. Our final little example is how to do use the if in an array formula when you have multiple criteria. Now we could use sum or uh, average or mode or any of those, but we want to do standard deviation. Now the trick is we're going to have, we have two criteria and we're going to have two ifs because the um, we're going to ask is it equal to this and equal to this then return this. Now the way it will work is when we have SR3 and a product 2 we want to return this value here to the standard deviation of the population function and this could be any function that does some aggregate like this. So I'm going to type equals STDEVP and now we do if if, and I'm going to have to say this whole range right here, and I control shift down arrow, equal to uh, the uh, criteria for sales rep, then if that's true, comma, if, a second if, and we have to do this whole product range, scroll back up here, and if that's equal to this criteria, then what do we want? 
comma. We want this sales range. Control Shift down arrow. And then uh, close parentheses, and then close parentheses. So that's um, a multiple ifs given two um, sets of criteria. And this will deliver a bunch of true falses. This will deliver a true false. It's, it's only when it gets a true here and a true here that it will take the value from there. I have one more parentheses, uh, close parentheses on this standard deviation. And you have to, and there's a red note here, you have to hold Control and Shift and hit Enter.